Hey there, Builder Blog. We are back here at Battle Bricks having a grand time. And some of you who watched last year's episode might remember this robot. This was Rupture, one of the most destructive robots at last year's tournament. It was built by a Swiss gentleman and actually mailed in to compete. And we have a special treat this year. Not only is this a bigger, better Rupture that's doing more damage than ever, we get to meet the builder himself. And so, Hi. could you introduce yeah. yourself to the Builder Blog? Okay, yeah, so, hey Builder Blog, my name is Philip Ingold, I'm from Switzerland, I'm the designer and driver of Rupture, and also Crucifix right here. So, I take it you're a big Tombstone fan, yes. since you brought a Crucifix. <laughs> yeah, exactly, um, Crucifix is mostly inspired by Tombstone, who's my favorite robot. Um, I've actually just built it this year. It's this is the second competition. Its first competition was Bricks Point Switzerland, which it actually won with a record of five and one. So it's the current Hell. Swiss champion. Yeah, that is amazing, man. Yeah, thanks. And I, I saw the finals. It was both of your robots. Yeah. And this thing managed to crush Rupture, which I just cannot imagine. But not only did you make these two, you you're just a creative genius, and you made another robot that you're driving with Diana. And what's this guy? Um, these are the Wraiths. They're a pair of lifters that are pretty much symmetrical. Um, they were actually prototyped as a single robot, but I realized because I made it so far underweight, I could actually just build a second one. That is ridiculous. I drive the blue one. So, what was it like trying to get all of these things through TSA? Yeah, it was, it was pretty stressful, but it, it was quite fun, like just opening up my backpack and taking out crucifix and raves and the security people just looked at me like, what's this exactly? <laughs> I was like, okay, so you've seen battle bots, right? So yeah, that's that's kind of how that went. Um, they looked really funny on the x-rays because it's just like a bunch of components, right? Um, yeah, but I just unpacked all of them because I was sure like if I just had them in the backpack, right? And I was scanning it and see like a bunch of wires and stuff, it's just gonna look like a bomb. So <laughs> uh, we, we know that. In fact, TSA gives us many cavity searches. Yeah. Welcome to being a bot builder. Yeah. So I, uh, I know Rupture went 3-0. Yeah. You even managed to destroy me with Scorpios. That was a heck of a fight. Oh, Crucifix ended at 3-0 too? Um, yes, actually, yeah. Wow. And the, what was the rates final? Um, the rates are 2-1 and one at the moment. Wow, so you have probably gotten all three robots into the finals for tomorrow. Yeah, they should all be qualified at the moment, yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming out and joining oh, yeah, us here at Battle Bricks. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Hey, Ivan. <laughs> Pieces are flying, mostly just armor at this point. They're never going to be in the corner. Rupture is mean today. Scorpios is piloted by the driver of the real Scorpios, the Battle Bots. Oh! I bet he wishes he had his real Scorpios right about now. Oh my goodness! Fantastic! Oh, oh that's, that is not good. Scorpios has lost his primary weapon. Rupture still going strong, very little damage. One minute to go. Ooh, almost. Oh my goodness, this shot's are insane. Oh! Excellent battle. Getting pressed up against the arena hazard. They gotta watch out for those screws. Come on, die already. Wow. Some excellent driving from both bots. Rupture almost hung up on the screws there. Any bot can win. 30 seconds. 30 seconds left. Yeah, so that's one of the lower lips, right, that I caught. So what do you, no what do you, what do you see in here? Pretty much fine. So that, that was Rupture breaking the Lego piece. <laughs> Just trying to see if there's some more. You know, this is fine. So, a lot of you may remember Bruin from last year. He was slaying bots left and right. But this year, we actually get to meet Bruins Builder. May I please introduce today's special guest. So, this is officially the Aaron Hill of, yeah! <laughs> the Aaron Hill of LEGO Robotics. Because not only did he invent like the best working hazard slash ice wave, 
he recreated Blip's flipper in Legos. Now I want you to know, I still don't even understand Blip's normal flipper, and the fact that here it is in Legos, and I still don't understand it, is incredible. How long did this take you to make? So to actually get this barely working, like to get it to flip and reload somewhat reliably, took six months, but to rework it and get it like actually reliable and working to where I have it now, all the adjustments I took, it's been like a whole year long project. All right, so could I see the flipper in action here? Um, so I don't want to test it out full power right now. I'll go like maybe 10% speed just to show off the mechanism. But the reason is because I'm using a plastic axle and it really wow. wants to be metal here. So <laughs> I actually had to make the entire mechanism easy to open up and repair. Like I could get this flywheel out of a robot in probably like 20 seconds if I went fast. So if we look on the underside here, this is your flywheel yes. that spins everything up. Mm -hmm. This, and we're, they're using the Boo Whiz motor here. That thing is insane. That's like what Rupture uses to spin his blade. Yes. I'm running a it, three to one ratio too. It's on the slower part. Oh, you're but, gearing this up? Yeah, this is spinning oh faster than God. Rupture's disc. <laughs> and then this motor is actually what uh, releases the trigger, which yeah. I believe you showed me up here. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna have this flywheel spinning and if you look at this flywheel here, what I have going here is I have this transmission connector. So these worm gears lock it in place. I'm gonna have it spinning until I connect this transmission, then it's gonna lock with the axle. So the way I do that is I have that switch underneath the robot, force that transmission into the flywheel and the flywheel is gonna be turning, turning, turning. And what I've learned the hard way is that if I just do that, I'm gonna wreck something when this hits the bottom and wants to continue forcing. So what I came up with is having this top switch here that will actually be triggered by the arm itself to release the arm when it gets all the way down to its position. And these rubber bands help hold in place. So my next question for you, how did you get started in Lego Combat Robots? So this actually happened like five or six years ago. I was building Lego and I was watching BattleBots. I did not even know, like I never made the connection you could do this with Lego until I just found a video of the Great Western Brick Show on YouTube. and. I thought that was the coolest thing, so I've been watching that for a while. Um, how I learned at the beginning, this is long before I really talked with others about this, but I watched like closely when a robot got destroyed and just like paused the video, zoomed in, saw what the electronics are, kind of started self-teaching myself like that and got started like that. So a couple of years later, I joined a Discord with the other builders here and shared what I knew with them. They shared what they knew with me and it just took off from there. That is incredible. I understand that you've managed to get four of your robots in the top 16. Yeah, just barely. You are officially a quarter of the entire field <laughs> here in the championship round. Well done, man. Thank you, well Zach. Well done. All right, my last question. How'd you get so smart? <laughs> just, just trial and error. You don't know how many times I've messed up on this. So it's not necessarily that I'm smart, it's that I just don't know when to quit. <laughs> Persistence. <laughs> it works every time. <laughs> hey there, Builder Blog. It's Diana. We are here at the Brick Con in the dark side. So they've turned all the lights down in the hall and all the setups that have light up features are now lit. Let's check it out.
So not to be outdone, the Lego builders went ahead and put lights in their robots, and we started having battles in this nighttime setup. I have to admit, this was like fighting robots in the middle of Tron. It was really cool. Ivy took the lights outside the park. Yeah! You lost one light. <sighs> one more, two more. Hey, not the screws. No, that's Phobos' job. Hey, hey, get it, get it. No! Yeah! So ladies and gentlemen, you may remember this robot last year. This is Phobos who showed up and we got to compete against, but we never got to beat the builder because they just mailed the robot in to compete. But we have a special treat this year. We actually have Phobos' builder. Come on over here. Introduce yourself to the builder block. Hello, um, my name is Justin Fossum. I'm from Spearfish, South Dakota, and I'm a college student at uh, CWRU, Case Western Reserve University in Cleveland, Ohio. So this is the most insane brick. I remember it specifically because it was the only robot we never repaired because somehow it would just fight and then hold together. And I was sure you glued this. I was sure. But after looking at it, I was like, nope, nope. It's just really smart. Uh, how did you do this? Well, actually, I spent a lot of time on this design. Contrary to this, which is my new robot this time, I built this like in two weeks. Um, this one I built, this was on and off for probably a good year. So um, I really tried to focus on making a really compact robot um, and uh, super durable. This robot, it's like, I think one of its biggest strengths is that it's really, really, really durable. Um, and basically my theory was that you can't lose if you can't get destroyed, right? So I, I, I focused- Smart approach. I focused on, I think, a very underrated quality in, uh, com in LEGO Combat Robots, and that is just sheer durability. So this, this robot, everything about it, all the pieces are connected in what I call a loop format, or loop design. So basically one piece is held by a second piece, which is held by a third piece, and then that last piece is held in by the first piece. So if you ever like uh, secured a cardboard box with that kind of uh, full technique, technique. Um, and then and, and basically one lap or it's like this um, sorry one of the cardboard uh, lips are on top of each other I guess the flaps one of the cardboard flaps are on top of each other um, that's kind of how this is designed um, and so then the weapon um, to the frame to everything else is arguably I would say the most durable Lego robot probably ever built I don't want to like. I, I would agree with anything, that. But I th I, it's, it's very durable. In fact, the only thing that I have replaced since the beginning of Brick's Cascade, so that's 10 fights now, was one weapon axle. Wow. One weapon axle um, and one O frame for cosmetic purposes. And then the forks have come off, and I've put the forks back on them. Yeah, well, but that's they basically need to be expendable. It. And, well, can, can you please tell us how you named your bots? Yeah, so um, this robot is Demos. This robot is Phobos. Um, I named them based off of Greek, Greek mythology. So these are uh, Greek mythology. Phobos and Demos are the sons of the god of war, Ares. Um, Phobos is the god of panic and fear. And so the whole name is that it instills panic and fear into its opponents. And then Demos, his twin brother, is the god of terror and dread. 
so it instills terror and dread in its <laughs> opponents. <laughs> um, after you split my robot today in two, I would completely agree with I'm that sorry. fact. Same with Don't mine. Apologize. Never Same. apologize for a good robot. <laughs> Same with mine. Um, but basically, um, so sorry to. So basically, uh, they're both sons of the god of war, Ares. And then Ares, the Roman equivalent of Ares, there's two, like there's Roman mythology and Greek mythology. The Roman equivalent of Ares is Mars, the god of, also the god of war. And the planet Mars has two moons, Phobos and Nemos. So that's kind of oh. cool. So there's this astrological and mythological component. Well, after getting to meet your robot last year, I am so excited I got to meet you this year. I'm so excited I got to meet you. You're a huge fan. <laughs> I'm a huge yeah, fan of you. Oh, thank you. Well, so ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with E-Man. Our favorite driver up in Seattle. Sorry, Martin. Ladies and gentlemen, stuff got so crazy. Uh, we actually had Kevin from Claw Viper and E-Man from The Big Dill both show up and join us at this con. And stuff just got ridiculous. I have to make this a two-parter episode or it's going to end up being 40 minutes. So please come back next week, like, and subscribe so we can show you the rest of the craziness. Well, ladies and gentlemen, well, ladies and gentlemen, this is the moment of truth. This is my Pelican case. And no, no, Diana, you're not. No, I need to open it. Go potty. That's now in the blog. I want you to know. You always think I'll edit it out, but then I don't. So, I put a thousand dollars of Legos in here, all custom made, and then I handed it over to the TSA. Yes, the TSA, my greatest enemy. Some people think it's Sawblaze. Nope, it's the TSA. And the real question is... Wow! Well, you know, I kind of thought the tower would be in a million pieces. Um, the stuff down here definitely got jiggered. But there's the Lego battle bot. It kind of was fighting the rest of the Legos on the whole trip. Oh yeah, this piece is supposed to go there. There, yeah, I, it shouldn't take me too long to fix it. All right, time to roll up the sleeves and build some Legos.